Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realise how fucking garbage this content is. And of course, if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute fucking loser. Now, obviously, it's ban list season. We've just got our new list coming into effect. We all know what's going to happen. Miscellaneousaurus is going to get absolutely yeeted off the fucking planet. And we have one copy left. So, much to the knee-jerking reaction of people who saw my June list and for some reason thought it meant July list. I don't know why. You're going to do whatever you're going to do. I really can't help you that you can't read, but you are a Yu-Gi-Oh player. So what am I supposed to expect? We now have an updated list here. Now, in truth, not much changes. In fact, very little at all changes. I, it's literally two cards different because that's the reality of it. That's all we need to change. Now, you could take some other options up. However, I'll talk through mine in a minute of what I've got going on here. I will also be doing a go second profile. I don't know which order I'm going to release them in. So you may see this before or you may see it after that has dropped onto the channel. Of course, not much changes because, well, Dino is Dino and there really isn't all that much to change up. Now, if you're feeling sore and butt frustrated from the changes on the list and you want to pick up some new cards, check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store. And if you go ahead and use that, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. Now I'm going to stop waffling on. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So like I say, not really all that much changes. So we start off with two copies of Conductor. Uh, it's Conductor 2 is perfectly fine. You, do, you really don't need a third. We have a single copy of Pancratops, because Pancratops is Pancratops. Uh, yeah, just one copy, that's all we can play. Solid Nova Raptor, of course, probably the most important card in the deck. I think without this, this is absolutely unplayable. In as much as having only one Misk Hurts, having one of this would suck so much worse. We have two copies of Arcasaur. This is a card that some people are looking at upping to three copies as a result of the change. I honestly still think two is absolutely fine. You're very rarely going to ever be able to continue to resolve it beyond that. Uh, and I think you're going to see it enough anyway. The deck has so many different ways to search this, which has obviously been a point that people have made about Miscellaneousaurus as well. Honestly, I think two is more than enough copies. Triple copies of Baby Cerasaurus. Uh, yeah, still three copies. We're playing a combo variant, of course. The primary aim here is to go nuts, set up our board, and hope our opponent can't play through it because we can't do the grind game anymore. We can't do the grind game anymore. So we need to just win turn one, and that is the aim of the deck. A single copy of Petit Tyranodon, of course, because it acts like a fourth baby. It can just help you get you over the line. A single sad copy of Miscellaneousaurus. Uh... What do I really need to add to this? Just one copy. A single copy of Giant Rex. We still only play one. You really don't need more than that. And that rounds off our main deck. Dinos, of course. Uh, yeah, all pretty self-explanatory, I think, for the most part. Of course, sad only having a single copy of Misk. But it is the way of the world. Now, onto our Scrap Engine. This actually remains unchanged, and I'll get to that in a moment. We're running two copies of Scrap Raptor and a single copy of of Scrap Chimera, or Scrope Chimera in this case. Very nicely named. So, some people are looking at upping this to three. I think this is too much of a brick at three. You really don't need that ex that, that additional normal summon. It's just really not necessary. You're still going to be summoning this from the deck most of the time, um, off one of your babies, and then, of course, going about your plays from there. I really don't think a third is necessary, but that is definitely something that you can look at doing. Now, as for the likes of the fridge and uh, recycler and things like that, again, really don't think it's necessary. Some people like to play it. I really just don't think you need to give yourself more reasons to brick. So that's something I would keep in mind. Now, also keep in mind as well, talking about the fridge, some people are also looking at playing Dragoon in these, and uh, I'm not in this particular build. If you're going to, again, you want even less reasons to put bricky cards in. And cards like Scrap fucking, what's it called? The refrigerator thing is not a good idea. Anyway, Artifact Scythe, still incredibly strong when going first. In fact, I'd argue just as strong next format as it is in the current one. Obviously, the time of recording is just before the July list actually takes effect. So, Artifact Scythe, um, yeah, it just ends turns. Uh, the likes of Tri Brigade really struggle with it. If you're playing against the likes of Striker, they really struggle with it. Any kind of Zoo variants, of course, Trident to 1 still doesn't change too much. 
they can't Zeus you because, well, they can't do anything like that. So this does hurt a lot of the top decks, and I honestly still think it's worth playing. The risk is, of course, that you brick on it, but more often than not, it just comes up absolutely fine. Now, onto our hand trap portion of the deck. We've got Gamma and Driver. Um, yeah, Gamma and Driver are still very, very strong in this format that's upcoming in July. Honestly, I think you just have to play this. Triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Still the most powerful generic hand trap. Hurts pretty much every deck in at least some capacity. Uh, I think you just have to play it. And then these are our two cards that have actually changed. We've added two copies of DD Crow. Now... I will add here because a lot of people will be going, why have you just added hand traps? Blah, 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 blah. We could add other extenders and things like that. The likes of Foolish Barrel. And that's certainly an option you could put in here. You could put in one for one if you wanted to. But honestly, I just don't think they're strong enough to really warrant it. I'd much rather have ways to play through my opponent and cards like DD Crow are going to help us get there. It can hurt Tri Brigade. It can hurt Striker. It can hurt Salamangre. It can hurt... All of those top decks in different ways. So I still think it's a very, very strong option to consider maining. And again, it hits pretty much every deck in at least some fashion. So I think it's really worth considering. Now again, if you wanted to, you could go for some power spells instead and use it that way. Some people are looking at Diagram and Litho. I really don't think that's necessary. But again, I think this is really good. Now you could add more extenders if you wanted to, just so you've got additional options. Because this is a slightly more combo-centric variant. But of course... That's not something that I'm doing in this particular one. Some people also looking at is a keystone, something or another, and the arch nemesis, the, yeah, that thing. Anyway, I'm not playing those in this variant. If you want to make nap beasts and stuff, you can look at doing that. Uh, I think, though, that this is absolutely fine. I'm not looking for ways to recycle Misk. Uh, I think just looking for that is a bit like the whole Kagari situation when that went to one. It just makes the deck weaker. I'd honestly just rather play strong cards that do other stuff like DD Crow uh, instead of that. Again, if you wanted to, you could add other combo pieces. This is just how I'm playing it for now. And it seems pretty good so far in testing. Now, onto our spells here. We've got triple copies of Pot of Prosperity. Uh, it's Pot of Prosperity. Still very, very strong. Still the option we want to go for. Triple copies of Fossil Dig. Uh, yeah, we just want as many ways to get into those cards as we can. Of course, Fossil Dig helps us get there. Double copies of Double Evolution Pill. Still two is the standard for me. Um, you're going to want to see it turn one and then maybe later on in the game. You really don't want to hard draw this. It's the saddest feeling in the world. So that's why we don't run three copies. It is just a brick. You want to just be able to search it. Triple copies of the field spell. Uh, it's still absolutely insane. One copy of Terraforming. Now, as a quick note, also whilst we're here, because this is effectively just the fourth copy... In terms of Lost World, this does help make up some of the ground that we've lost with Misk, at least from the protection effect. This is still going to help you get a little bit protected from the majority of things, but it's a far more fair and balanced approach, which I think most people would agree is absolutely okay. And honestly, I think that that's why they left this card alone. I think it's absolutely fine. It just doesn't have all the crazy other effects that Misk has. And finally, we still have a single copy of Call by the Grave. Hand Trap Protection is going to be as important now as it ever was. In fact, possibly even more so. And it's a great defensive or offensive card. It can hit many different decks in many different ways. Sadly, it's still at one. I'd love to see it at three, but that is the way of the world. Now, that does make up our main deck. We haven't done a side deck for this because, honestly, side decks are just so open at the moment. Consider adding cards like Any Spell Fragrance, Imperial Order, uh, other copies of Hand Traps that can just hit cards in the grave. Uh, things like that just to maybe consider at least going forward now onto the extra deck we have a single copy of link karibo uh, it's link karibo it helps us get into our combo plays it helps us get rid of tokens especially in the mirror match and that kind of thing a single copy of secure gardener for linking away our link karibo pretty much self-explanatory pentastag because it enables otks absolutely broken still running a single copy of scrap wyvern for that package absolutely fantastic just absolutely recommend it Still a copy of Dagda in here because, of course, we're maining the Scythe. So that's going to be your usual line of play. Nightmare Phoenix is just good utility. Of course, you can swap this out for other stuff instead. A single copy of Lambda. We're still playing the Gamma and Driver package. There's absolutely no reason not to. A single copy of Appaloosa for when we do see the absolute stones and we can play that far ahead. This is just going to give you some really good options. It's not what I make very often, but sometimes I just have so many excess cards that I can go through that I really just feel like the extra interrupts are a good way to stop our opponent. A single copy of Abyss Dweller, still probably the best rank 4 in the game, so you absolutely have to play it. A single copy of Dolker, it's Dolker. A single copy of Lagia, it's Lagia. 
Degares helps us to OTK. It can help us undo some of those bad hands. All of that good stuff. A single copy of Tornado Dragon. That's for popping your scythe. But also it's good considering we're in a bit more of a back row heavy format going forward. So something to absolutely look at considering. A single copy of Borrowed Savage, still something that we can absolutely make with our scrap combos. Uh, generally a very good option to go into. Of course, he's a massive body as well, and that's the aim of the game. And then finally, a single copy of Omega. Of course, before we were playing it, because we can rip cards out of our opponent's hands, uh, we can shuffle things back, we can do all of that good stuff, and of course we can make it because we're running Gamma and Driver. Obviously, the added benefit of this is that it does give you a way to recycle Misk, at least popping it back into the grave so you can resolve its effect again. Not something that I'd rely on too heavily. It does make it a massive, massive target for cards like Crow, which I suspect are going to be all over the format, but something to consider. And that is it for today's deck profile. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two, or maybe you've got some ideas of what you could do. Again, this is a very early list. So of course, things will change over time as and when things get more optimal. Personally, though, I think this has worked really well in testing. Not too much to change up. So let me know down in the comments what you're going to be using instead of your miscellaneous source to get your plays going. Or maybe you're going to go down the ghost second variant, in which case you'll play it all differently. There will also be a video out, I don't know again if it's going to have dropped by the time this video is out or later on, that is going to discuss how we go forward without Miscellaneousaurus. Something you might want to check out for some additional food for thought on how you want to approach this new format. Once again guys, thank you very much for coming along, I do really appreciate you being here. Make sure you have hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.